Today we are going to look at a different way at lighting NeoPixel LEDs using ESP8266. I have been involved in this project called Mech Lighting. Um, so what this does is actually a wrapper around different animations uh, that you can uh, load onto the ESP8266 using WS2812FX library. Um, so the the best part of mech lighting is you have a whole variety of different clients that you can use uh, from an android uh, app um, to a web interface or you can connect it to home assistant so those are the different ways you can actually control the lights uh, on a new pixel connected to usb 8266 today we'll do something completely different so we're going to look into this protocol called E1.31 protocol. So what this is, is every packet that comes is considered as a universe. And in this universe, you have 512 channels. So you have channel 1 to 512. So basically, you can have up to seven universes for a multicast. And this means that you can send data such as red, green, and blue. So the values for red, green, and blue can vary from 0 to 255. So it's an unsigned integer 8-bit. Um, so basically what this does is you can actually send uh, red, green, and blue data in these uh, channels. So this means that you can actually uh, put sequence these RGB values one after another and what you will get is eventually each RGB corresponds to the data for one NeoPixel. So what you can do is for every universe you can fill up to 170 NeoPixel uh, LEDs, um, the data that is required to light up each one of these guys. And because each one is individually addressed, you, you can then transfer this particular data onto your NeoPixel strip. So this means that you have seven universes, 170 pixels in total, then you have 1,190 LEDs that you can actually control by sending data along seven different universes. So the hardware setup is actually very simple. Uh, uh, this is inspired from this particular project, ESP uh, Pixel Stick. Um, so uh, Shelby is the guy who actually developed this. He has a GitHub page where he has uh, open sourced the whole project. So you can go ahead and uh, go and look at these this particular project. But um, what I'm doing here is slightly different. Uh, so in this case, I'm using a ESP266, very similar to what um, Shelby has done here. I connect the ground to the NeoPixels uh, ground. I connect 5 volt and ground to a separate source for ESP266. And I also connect a capacitor, 1000 microfarad capacitor, uh, right before the NeoPixel um, strip starts and the dn that is the data is connected to rx so the method that i'm using actually transfer the data out of the dma and transfers it into the neopixel so this is the hardware setup so this particular part can uh, stay anywhere uh, like a porch or an outside uh, window or on the roof and it connects wirelessly to your wireless router and what you would need is another computer or a raspberry pi or something like that uh, which can actually get inputs from the microphone um, the the music or particular video and then it can convert that into some kind of uh, rgb information and send it uh, send a udp packet most routers would not allow this particular UDP packets to go through unless you go into some advanced settings in your router. So what we will actually do is uh, send these multicast uh, packets directly to this particular IP. So I'm going to show you how to set this up as well. So in terms of software, you can try the ESP Pixel Stack that is again done by Shelby. Um, you can also try WLED library. Uh, it's a good project where you have various animations and also it has a support for e1.31 uh, data and uh, i've been developing the e131 branch of the mech lighting project as well so if you want to go and try that go ahead and try that and give us some feedback so this is the library that i have created so what i want for this library is that this can be template for other projects so this is just bare bones 
that all it does is reads um, the data and then shifts it into the uh, uh, new pixels. So the goal of this particular project is to reach highest possible FPS and be the least overload on the CPU because the CPU of uh, ESP to six is can get easily overloaded when you do a lot of things on it. So basically, um, this incorporates uh, the async version of uh, E1.31, uh, which actually reads your um, data and then puts it into a particular array of uh, unsigned int 8D. So what we'll do next is actually take this E1.31 data and transfer it into the NeoPixel using the DMA method. And we're going to use the NeoPixel bus uh, library to do that. So here I have uh, the latest release. You can try this out. Uh, so this is version 1.1.2 as of now, and uh, you can go and check this out. But um, the, once you upload the library, then you need to send the data from your computer. So basically here, there are three different ways. You can use Jinx um, that you can download from this particular location. You can use LEDFX, um, which uh, can uh, read your microphone data and send that to um, your um, LEDs. And uh, of course, the favorite is XLight. So you can use any one of these programs um, to send data. So what we will do are these steps. First, we will set up universes, then we'll configure uh, the type of LED we have. So basically the LED that I have is a certain type. So we're gonna change the LED order, and then um, we're gonna configure the LED positions and then set up animations and that's it. And these guys will start sending data. So first let's go and look at Jinx. Okay, so the upper uh, left corner, you will see that I have four LEDs that are 150 LEDs in each one of these rings. So this is ring one, ring two, ring three, ring four, and they're connected in series because NeoPixel, you can connect one end to the next one and serially send data out. So here um, I have set up a matrix. So in this case, I've set up first um, a matrix of 150 times four. So this is actually 150 pixels here and four pixel high. And then I go and set up output devices. So in this case, my particular ESP8266 has this particular IP. I can show you what I did here. So you just go and define your E1.31 and then put your IP address over here and you say universe one, two, three, four. So there are four different universes that spans over four different uh, LEDs and each universe contains 170, not 150. So it'll go over the four LED uh, strip. So once you set that up, then you go and um, set up your um, output patch. So output patch is actually a patch of LED that it actually creates. So I'm gonna clear the patch and let's do that from the beginning. So first thing you do is go over here, create fast patch. In this case, I want to fill up 170 LEDs um, uh, with the height of one for the first um, patch device. So here, remember I said I'm gonna configure the LED order. So this is where you define your LED order minus GRB LED order, so there you go. So the first channel is zero, click OK. So this fills up your um, LEDs up to 150. So you see, so this particular guy has 448 to 449. So which means that we still have some data left out of um, the first um, universe. So what we're gonna do is uh, fill that value. So basically it automatically fills it up. So it's gonna fill 150 LEDs, uh, with the first channel being the uh, next number after the last LED over there. So you then fill this up. So this is 170 LEDs, 150 plus 20. So next we're gonna fill this guy with the next universe. So again, I'm gonna do a fast patch. So over here, fill as many LEDs as possible on my second because I've now exhausted my first LED. So click okay. So now you will see that this has filled up but the last number is going to be different. Let me not worry about that. Let's go to our second one, sorry, the third column and click on fast patch. So in this case, it starts on this one and tries to fill as many as possible. I'm just going to give a high number so that it completely spans the second universe. Okay, so this is the last uh, 510th uh, data is over here. So next we'll go to the third universe over here. You can then go and fast patch it and uh, fast patch over here. Um, so now this is gonna fill that portion and then come over here 
and uh, do a fast patch, uh, start with the third universe and see how much you can go. Um, so there is still some data that is unfulfilled because you have now reached the end of the third universe, which is at 510. So now we're going to fill this up to the fourth universe. So you just select the fourth universe with the first channel of zero, click OK, and there you go. So now the whole LED matrix is filled up. So now what we are going to do is um, uh, now we have assigned where the data has to go. So all you have to do is then define a particular animation. So now I'm going to say start output. So now it's comp sending um, E1.31 data continuously over there. Right now it's sending just zeros. Uh, so let's do a radar scan over there. So as you can see, um, as this line is going over here, it's actually spanning through um, the LED uh, matrix over here. So each line corresponds to each role. So that is why this particular color is being spanned over the whole LED matrix. Um, you can uh, use some other animations. So this is just falling rain. So it just creates this. You can create uh, various different animations. So you can try star field. This looks really fancy. So this is probably for um, a DJ or some kind of uh, animation that it, so you can create triggers based on sounds. So this is an easy to use software that people like to use. Okay. Uh, but what I find is it never hits beyond uh, FPS of 25. Um, so that is a problem. Um, but anyway, so this is one of the easy way to do it. The next thing we will look at is actually we will look at LED FX. So um, this is a GitHub library. You can go and uh, follow the instructions on the installation. So in my case, I'm using Anaconda to install LED FX. So I'm uh, opening that particular um, virtual uh, environment and opening LED FX by using this. So this creates the web interface. So in the web interface, you will have this. So I'm going to delete this and let's create a new one. So basically you click on plus and select your type. So in this case, E1.31. So in this case, let's try giving this some name. An IP address is 192.168.0.16. And in pixel count, I'm going to give 600 because I have 600 LEDs over here. And in additional configuration, I need to specify that I have 510 uh, data for every universe. And uh, you can then click add, that's it. And then your device is added over here. So then you can go to devices. Over here, you can select, let's say, legacy scroll. Um, so then you can just say set effect. So every time you talk, you will see that this particular data is actually sent uh, continuously to um, the ESP8266 using this E1.31 protocol. So this is the data that is being sent. Um, so you can create uh, different animations over here. Again, this is meant to be voice-based um, application. So you can create beats, uh, legacy spectrum, and wavelength pitch, and you can you can try the different configurations over here. So here, what I'm trying to show is there are different ways of sending this particular UDP data to your ESP8266. Let's try the third method. In the third method, we're going to use X slides. Um, so here is a website for that and uh, the community there is fantastic. Okay, so in X slides, uh, you just uh, first start with setup. So in setup, uh, you just say add uh, E1.31. Over here, uh, click on unicast, even though we are sending multicast. So here you just specify the LED uh, IP address over here and the number of universes. So here I have this already over here. So basically you specify the IP address of the starting universe is number one. In this case, we're going to use four universes and the last channel is 510. You just say, okay, so that's it. So that's all you need to do for setting this up. Um, then we need to go and do some layouts. I already have some layouts. So basically uh, let me clear these. So I can show you how easy they are. Okay, so the first step is I'm going to define a circle of LEDs. So right over here, then go over here and type in 150 LEDs. So that corresponds to this particular ring. Um, so here in terms of channel, I'm going to click over here. Universe, I'm going to select this particular universe and it's going to start here. So basically now this has completed the setup for the first ring. So for the second ring, I'm going to again do something similar. I'm going to come over here, 
type in 150 leds over here um and it automatically starts a channel from the previous um uh, configuration and only thing that you need to change over here is actually the order of the LEDs which is your GRB order um, so then you do the same thing over here um, for the next LED um, so again for this it is 150 it automatically figures out which universe to do and then you just select the type of LED you have then with the third, fourth ring over here um so this is your fourth one which is here um don't worry about the universe it automatically spans that again set your um led pattern just want to make sure this led pattern is set no this is not so um set the correct led pattern so there you go so that's it that's all you need to do for configuration so now you have four leds over here so click on new sequence so this opens this in this case animation um, so basically, uh, we're going to do 40 frames per second, quick start, so it automatically fills this up. Um, so now you have one, two, three, and four. So the first one, uh, let's do something like um, an animation for this. And let's increase the timing for that. So right over here. Okay, so all you have to do is then click on this button, so which gives an output, and then click play. Right over there, you see that this particular thing is getting animated. Again, the setup is very simple. It's exactly the same thing that you're doing, and there you go. So that particular guy is animating, so let's go to, I'm going to stop that. Uh, let's add something else. Let's create a snowstorm for the second one. Um, do something very similar uh, for the third one i'm going to use um, um live and for the fourth one so it's all just drag and drop and this, this is the timeline just like just like editing a video so basically you have so many options over here you can trigger these animations based on um the day of time you can also um trigger these animations so this is like the fire kind of uh, animations over here so you can do this on the fly um you can create schedulers so again it's up to your imagination as how you want to use this um so you can have uh this connected to a music uh, kind of thing so whatever it is so basically it, it's up to your imagination on how you want to use this uh so go ahead and try it and uh, send um, UDP data to your ESP to 6x um, and see how this goes.